Thank you for checking out Tea and a Buddy on YouTube. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hello and welcome to Tea and a Buddy podcast. I'm Dominic. And I'm Erica. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about moving to the USA from the UK. Yay! Yay! <laughs> and, and we'll follow this one up with uh, moving to the UK from the USA, you know. So, yeah. Even though we have no experience with that one. <laughs> no, we have, we have little or no experience with that one, but... We know people who do, and we will do our research better. We <laughs> yeah. promise. Yes. But yes, m moving, you know, people think it's easy. Yeah. People think, oh, yeah, I can just get on a plane or cross the border and yeah. it's, it's cool. Well, people think. And go live there. Well, we're talking about. Buy a house. We're buy a car. We're talking specifically get a job. from the UK to the USA. But people in America think, you know, you hear it all the time. And it's like. Well, I don't want to get political here, but, you know... You Very hear, political. You hear it all the time in this country. Well, why don't they just become legal through the um, appropriate channels, through the legal channels? You know, why don't they do... Why don't they do it like everybody else? Well, because it's not that easy. It's not that easy, and it's incredibly expensive. Yeah. You it is. You, you, you know, yeah. You, you literally cannot just say, you know what... I think I'd really like to live in the United States. I that just seems like the best place. Let's just bless your let's heart. Just, let's just pack up and drive on over there, and that'll be great. We'll have the best life. You can't do that. You can't do that. No, you you cannot do that. No, no. it does not work like that. So sorry to anybody living in any other countries that are listening, thinking, yeah, next year I'm going to try to yeah. move to the United States. You're gonna have some trouble. <laughs> You're gonna have a little, a lot of trouble. Yeah. And I mean, you. I mean, there's people who do it though. You know, they come in, and you know, they they happen to be one from one of the countries that has a visa waiver program. There's quite a lot of them mm -hmm. out here that sh that do that with the United States. Uh, the UK is one of them. I. You said you read somewhere that they're doing away with that over here. America's going to they want they want to get out of the visa waiver program I, some, I, 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 I guess why. it's because you know it's like oh anybody could be a terrorist now mm, I don't know if it has anything to do with that it's I can't remember I'm not gonna I'm not gonna yeah I'm not gonna, to gonna not gonna comment what, on it what the reason was yeah I mean I, I haven't remember. done any research on that either so I don't know but yeah I mean people from one of those countries you can come to the US and I think it's you can it's valid for two years, but you can come and go as you like within those two years without a visa. Okay. Yeah, you can stay for up to ninety days, which is what I did on my first yes. trip over here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I stayed for like three months or something, and mm -hmm. it was fine. And you know, but some people come over here, and you know, they might have a family member or they might have, you know, friends over here that are mm -hmm. working, and they say, yeah, you know what, you should stay. Yeah. And they do. They overstay the visa, you know, the ETSA or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, they overstay the time they're allowed over here and they don't get caught until they go try to get out of the country and come back. Right. Which is what happens in, like, the UK, too. I mean, the majority of illegal residents in America have come over on some type of visa and their visas have Run just out. expired. Yeah, they've just expired and they never renewed them or never... Uh, you know, never yeah. got caught caught up with them because, by ICE or whatever. You know, because if you have ICE, as they call them, the dreaded ICE. <laughs> because if you have a visa to legally be here, um, whether you're working or a student, or we're going to talk about the different types of visa that, visas that you can get, you're probably you're probably allowed to work. Depends on how long you've been here. You you're <clears> probably <throat> given a work permit. And um, you you may Employment have even... authorization document, an EAD. I got one when I first moved here. Mm -hmm. And that you... was just before I got a green card, which was permanent residency. And, you know, the EAD became obsolete for me then. Okay, I think I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's let's talk about, before, before we move on to 
where I was just about to, <laughs> oh, okay. to venture. Um, why don't we talk about the different types of <clears throat> visas that you can get? In well, order you can to get sponsored here. employment. And that's if you're looking to work in the USA, the best way to get permanent entry is to to acquire sponsorship from a company. You know, that means the job says, you know what, we're moving you here. Yeah. We'll sort out your visa. You know, you can live here and everything and we'll we'll take care of it for you. You don't have, all you have to do is sign on the dotted line right. and everything's cool. Everyone's 18. <laughs> and the easiest way to do that is to hook up with a worldwide con um, company, right? Yeah, so worldwide, like Apple, your, Google, your, yeah. you know, get a job that in kind your, of places. Get a job in your own country and then put in for a transfer to America or yeah. wherever, wherever it is that you're wanting to go. Because the reason I say that is because you cannot just come to America and look for work you can't just walk into yeah you can't do that you it's can't illegal just fly over here like to visit as a tourist and decide you know what I'd, i really like it here I'm, i want to stay here so i'm going to go look for a job you can't do that it yeah. is not legal the only work you have that, to adjust your status yeah you know um if you get caught doing that you will be get deported you'll yeah. get kicked out yeah it'll be de instant deportation um you i mean people do it of course and they find people work do it and, and they find work and they and you know they, they they're getting paid cash. either the, the employer knows what's the score yeah or they've somehow managed to get hold of a secu social security number yeah which i don't know how. i mean some employers may be willing to if you for some reason are really skilled and just didn't realize that you were wanting to live in America before you got there and didn't apply with a company beforehand and you went in for an interview and they're just like oh well you're not you know you're you're not here legally but you really do have the the I mean you're not not that you're not here legally but you're not looking for work legally yeah. um but you really do have some really great qualifications and actually we are really interested in you I mean I'm saying this this is going to be very rare. <laughs> oh, you know what? We'll we'll sponsor you. We'll, we'll sponsor do all the paperwork you. to yeah. get you here legally. You may have to go home for a time, and then we'll bring you back once all the paperwork has gone through. Yeah, I think those those cases are very rare, though. <laughs> extremely rare. Extremely rare. Yes. Because most companies are are looking for. I mean, they, they're going to give priority to Americans. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. They're, they're not handing out jobs to every the citizens of the world when there's Americans yeah, when there's that Americans are qualified and... Taking our jobs... Uh... And need work. Well, no, I mean, I mean that's just, that's just the facts of it because it's like, they're already here. We're not, we don't have to mess with paperwork. We don't have to mess with, because it is, it's a lot of trouble guys. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that if we have time, yeah. but, um, we don't have to mess with trying to get them over here. You know, they're already here. So why, you know, we're not going to mess with it. The jobs that will be easy for you to get in, if you're not like super skilled, you know, some kind of like, um, what was I going to say? I was going to say <laughs> astrophysicist or, you yeah. know, I, I was going to say astronomer. I don't know why. <laughs> if you're a super skilled astronomer, <laughs> you're coming to the USA. Whatever. Um, you probably can find nursing jobs, doctor jobs, teaching jobs. Um, nursing jobs, you yeah. know. You can probably uh, find those anywhere around dental, the world. Yes, yeah, They'll you can do that in the UK you. too. Uh, dental jobs, um, you know, what do they call the dentists? The one who does all the work and then the dentist comes in. The and hygienist. Says, the hygienist, that's it. <laughs> that That's because these industries, um, they have a hard time finding people who want to do those kinds of jobs for whatever reason. I don't know. Because so, they think they're menial jobs and, oh, they deal with people and, you know. I guess, but a doctor's not a menial job. But well, a doctor, yeah, that a doctor, more into you the, have to, um, like, go to skilled, school. Yeah, skilled. It's, it's skilled. Yeah, yeah, that's skilled. It's like um, the doctor is the ultimate one who's got to sign off and everything, you know. It's like if you're a nurse, you just come in and you keep them happy right. and make sure you're okay. And take their blood. <laughs> right. they, you do all the work, basically, for the doctor to just come in and go... Yeah, she's okay. Yep, yeah, you can go. Yeah. 
So if you're going to come over on a work visa, um, you're going to either be with a company that has transferred you to America from wherever it is that you're living, or you're going to have already corresponded several times back and forth yeah, with, yeah, yeah. with the company that you're wanting to apply with in the States. And they're, they have agreed that, yeah, they like you, they want you to they want to employ you and they'll take care of all your paperwork. You you you're not gonna come over here and just walk, walk into a job walk the streets and like look look, look for, for jobs. Worm, yeah. yeah. Look for worm, I thought you said look. <laughs> You're not gonna just come over here and look for worm. I mean that's just absurd. Look for worm. Yeah, look <laughs> okay. for work. The, the next uh, point. Uh, a student visa. That's um another way of coming to live in America for mm -hmm that time anyway you're going to be going to school you're going to be going to university yeah college as they call it over here yeah. and you can work on that and it's valid uh, student visa valid for about two years so i think you have to if you like you're doing a four-year course you have to renew it or something yeah oh, okay yeah <clears throat> um and you can work on one you can get a job on that but i think it's only 20 hours a week you can work well that's in the uk i don't know if that's no it's in the u.s too oh, okay. yeah i looked that up okay. so yeah it's only 20 hours <laughs> so a same, week same yeah in both countries it's the same sort of thing yeah. which is basically if you part, work over that time. yeah it's part time yeah, yeah because i mean you can fund your education you know whatever mm -hmm. or just so you go to school part time you work part <laughs> you work part time you work part time yes yeah yeah, so I mean that's that's an option. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of people can... in uh, in the U.S. probably come in on a student visa and stay overstay it. Yeah, and just get a because, job and work full time well, and start think, living. You know, I think you can. I think there is some sort of thing where you can look for a job on a student visa. You can. I think yeah. if you're here on a student visa, you can look for employment. Well, yeah. Um. I don't know if you have to be like in an internship or something like that with whoever you're looking to get employed by, but I think that there is some. Don't quote me on that, <laughs> but I think, but I think that is okay. You know, we, yeah, yeah, before yeah. before yeah. we said you can't do that, but I think you can do yeah, it on yeah. a student visa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think, you know, it's like as I said, you know, people can get a training program after they work. You know, they you know after after your university term ends or whatever uh, you know you've graduated and yeah, everything yeah. you can um apply to go on to work i guess or apply for like more education further education right and i don't know i mean i don't know i mean i don't know how many people just say you know oh, i'm done here i'm gonna go back home you know yeah I'd say, the, I'd say probably a majority of them. A majority, because I mean, people used to say, well, uh, yeah, you know what? You know, I've, I've, I've met a lot of people like that. It's like, oh, I studied in London. Yeah, studied in the UK. Right. And, and they live back over here now. You right. know, they didn't want to, they yeah. just wanted to study abroad. Yeah, I think a lot, I think that's like, that's an experience a lot of like college age kids want to have just to live somewhere, yeah. you know, for a, for a little period of time, but they don't intend on living there forever. And so during going to school is a good way to do that you know yeah 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 the next one is the obvious one the working visa you can get a visa to work in the usa without having a direct employee sponsor in order to do this you must fit within very specific criteria is what you were talking about you know right. the best way to become eligible to apply is to gain a degree like having a master's or a phd improves your chances and working in the field for at least five years, you know, something like a doctor, yeah, an astronomer, you have to as have you said, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and uh, <laughs> you know, and um, you have to have astronaut, <laughs> you know, you have to have experience <clears throat> in the field that you're <clears throat> wanting to, yeah, come over here and get a job in. To gain a work visa without sponsorship, you effect effectively have to prove your value to the U.S. working community. You know, basically be a skilled mm -hmm. employee. You know, you somebody that maybe we don't have too many. Yeah. Of. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're also more likely to gain entry if it, you know, under the work sh uh, skill shortages like nursing, mm -hmm. teaching. Teaching. Yeah. Um, I think there's a shortage on um. Law enforcement as well, Probably. public public service. I, would, I mean, unfortunately, I would I would imagine so. I'd... And there's also the family visa. That's that's the one 
I did. Yeah. That's my personal experience I've done. Mm -hmm. If a member of your family is a citizen of the United States, you may be able to apply for a visa without that with their support. <clears throat> family visas are a pretty stable way of gaining permanent entry to the US, although they take long periods of time to acquire. So yeah, mine was like over a year, almost a year, wasn't it? Or two years, something? Oh, gosh, I don't know. It was, it was a long process. I mean, it was a long time ago now. It was a long now. time ago, so it's difficult to remember. Remember, but... yeah. And the, the processes are quicker if you're a child of that person well, or, yeah. or you're marrying a person, you know. Mm -hmm. But I, <clears throat> if it wasn't for that... Um, medical issue you know that with the doctors and stuff yeah i think i probably would have been over here sooner yeah i think that was the the only thing that kind of kind of held things yeah, back really I think so. mm -hmm. yeah i think so um so they have different types of family visas obviously uh, yeah there's a lot of them. and and if you're looking to get married they they have a fiance visa <clears throat> or if you're already married for some reason, if you somehow got married and one of you lives over here and the other one lives somewhere else, then you have a spouse yeah, visa. Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, you there's all kinds of... So basically, with each one of these that we talked about, except for the working visa, the working visa, you have to be skilled or you have to be... An, you know, you have to be in a field that there's a shortage of people in. But the, But the others... You all have you have to have a sponsor. So even with a student visa, your school is your sponsor. Your school, yeah, is yeah, the your one that's school, the school you. is the one that's like gonna <laughs> help you out with that, yeah. And basically, what that means is, in this country, are are the sponsors? They are the ones that have to fill out all the paperwork, decipher all the legalese. I mean, a lot of people end up getting an immigration attorney because the wording on all the documentation that you have to fill out is so convoluted really it's convoluted <laughs> it's legalese it's it's double talk yeah it's a it's lot governmental of, it's governmental <laughs> at the end of the day they're trying to kind of like they say they're not but they are trying to trip you up yeah, I mean, there's ve there's very specific requirements of what they want. They want everything in a certain order. You have to do this. It's got to be um, done like that. Get me you, to the embassy on have, time. You have to have several different copies of it. The sponsor is supposed to have a, ho a whole set of copies. The I can't remember what the person coming um, over is called. I've got to have a full set of copies. They've gotta, yeah. yeah, they've got to have a full set of copies. And then the government's got to have a full set of copies they've got to all be labeled everything's got to be very like organized so basically there's a lot of pressure put on the sponsor to do everything correct in order to get the other person Over, into yeah. this country yeah and you know sometimes it's just kind of like oh do i want to do that you oh know oh my god yeah I mean, you know it's just like it's 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 like it's a lot of work I it's a imagine... lot of it's a lot of like it's just a lot of it's a pain in the ass basically is what it is yeah. you know it's it's a pain in the ass so yeah you can understand why people are like eh. yeah why companies don't want to bother why companies don't want to bother why individuals highly hiring immigrants yeah yeah or individuals bother you know yeah um, doing it for themselves you know yeah um so you can't just move to this country and like have your friends sponsor you well, well, no, 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 you can't. You know, I've got a mate over here that's yeah, going to sponsor me. So, no, <laughs> it's like you know, unless you're marrying that mate, then yeah. you know, it's like this is. This and is you not... have to prove. And if you are marrying the person that's coming, you have to prove that you're in a real relationship. I mean, I don't know if any of you have ever seen the movie Green Card, but it's just uh, like. Is that with uh, who? Who was in that? Um, Gerard Depardieu. Oh yeah. I don't know how to say his. Gerard Depardieu. Yeah, Depardieu. De <laughs> um, it's an old movie again. I'm aging myself, but it's an old. It's from what 2002 or something. That's I don't not think so. Movie. No, it's when? much older than that. What? <laughs> when is Green Card from? <laughs> I'm sure it's from like 2002 or four or something. But there was one. There was one um, with I think Jennifer Aniston. Oh, I don't know. Um, maybe I'm thinking. Of, and, and he was Canadian, and he was trying to get into the U.S. Oh yeah. I don't, I don't, 
I don't know that I've seen it. You're the big Jennifer Aniston fan. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually not. I'm not up on my Jennifer Aniston. Sorry to say. Um, but anyway, yeah, you, you have to prove that you're in a relationship, which is weird and bizarre. And it's just like, how do you prove that you're in a relationship? Yeah, I mean, you know, you've got to take photos. You've got to, like, show that you're living together. Ma- male. Uh, male, shared, shared bank accounts, all that kind of stuff. You know, you've got to show that well, your life, you lives even, are intertwined. Yeah. Yeah. That's after you're even together. Because... Yeah, because that, that's, <laughs> you've got to show that for the green card. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, our, our immigration officer, when we went to for our interview, as soon as she came in, she goes, oh, well, yeah, you're obviously still together, so, you know, yeah. and you're obviously in a real relationship. Because usually people that, you know, I see have done this, it's usually the spouse that comes or, or you know, whatever, the, the person, you know, like the immigrant comes without the spouse. Oh, and they, they're given an, an excuse in... She couldn't be here, and da, 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 she got to work, and da, 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 and they're just like, yeah. Or is she, or is she actually not with you anymore? I mean, and, depending on or what is he's not with you anymore, or whatever, you know. I mean, depending on what country the immigrant is from, they may give you a harder time once you actually get here. They may check up on you. I mean, it actually says that that is a possibility. We've never, we never had that happen. We've never had anyone checking up on us, no. Um, but they can just randomly stop by your house and make sure see you're, st- if you're living yeah. together and um, all of that kind of stuff. So that all of that kind of stuff is very stressful. Even though, yeah. I mean, obviously in in mine and Dominic's um, case, we actually were in a relationship, so we weren't hiding, we weren't lying about anything. Um, but it's still very like stressful and like oh my god I have to get affidavits from people affidavits saying that and, they you know other people saying swearing that we are actually in a relationship. Oh yes, and I saw them together. Saw on them the together night on the October. night of October the third. <laughs> They've got an alibi. They've got an alibi. Okay. Yeah. He didn't do it, Columbo. Uh, no, we have to have pictures, a range of pictures, like from different holidays of us together. You know, showing that different that we've been together for different time periods and oh we've traveled over here we are at traveling to this place together and here he is with my grandma and you know it's just like yeah yeah that kind of stuff there's a lot of um burden of proof is burden of proof yeah that's what it is yeah burden of proof so basically the person that's coming over sort of has it relatively easy i mean you had to do a medical exam i had to do a medical exam where i went to a medical place in in central london um in knightsbridge actually um where i they did they tested me out they put me through um they gave my lungs a scan they give me a stress test, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> and it was kind of like, you know, the doctor was like, oh, yeah, you know, watch out for American food and stuff because they eat so much crap over there. <laughs> and, oh, you know. They, um, but basically he has to make sure he doesn't have that. They, they were making sure he doesn't have any communicable diseases. Yes, basically they were, they were making sure that I wasn't carrying TB. You come over here and like. I had apparently been, ex- uh, you know, in, in my report, I apparently had been exposed to TB. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like, well, maybe that was the vaccine, you know? Gosh, maybe yeah. it was a vaccine I had at some point, you know, maybe they're just like, oh yeah, it's still in there, you know. <laughs> Lying dormant, ready to. They injected it. They injected you with it, and then said, "Oh, look, you were exposed." <laughs> yeah. Also, I don't know. It was really weird. That I exposed to TB. Yeah, that Probably was on the London Underground. I'm guessing something. Yeah, it's a lot of t- it's a lot of TB in London. Um, but yeah, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't test whether you'd had it. It would just literally show that you had been exposed to it. And yeah, uh, yeah. You well, no, no. I obviously don't have it. Yeah. You know. Um. Not coughing up blood yet. <laughs> so I don't know. There, there was all kinds of. Ooh, sorry, there was. Sorry about that. <laughs> there was all kinds of stuff like that, and um, he happened to have a, an issue that like hung everything up and made made it take even longer. And um, you only have a certain amount of time to get over here once you've been approved you have a, a certain amount of time if you come over on a fiance visa you have a certain period of time to come over and execute the wedding you know yeah <laughs> execute we, the marriage yeah you've got like, to, you've got to come over here and you've got about 
two weeks or something to do it. No, I think it's like six months. But... Six months, but uh, well, we had like two. No, we had about a month. We had about a month. Yeah. About a month to get mm. everything sorted and married, and then adjust the status. Yeah, it was very kind a month of like to plan a wedding. Yeah, a month nice. to plan a wedding. <laughs> Because we couldn't start planning until we knew he was going to come over here. And they kept jacking around with the, you know, there's the NHS for you, NHS lovers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was the NHS, yeah. But it was just kind of like getting the, my doctor to send my medical file to the London doctors so they could send it on to the embassy. And the embassy could say, okay, he's fine. Yeah. And I remember that, to, be, to their credit, they did do when it was like... You know, I'd, so I didn't have to go back up to London and have my passport stamped. They they sent a courier, you know, and it was like overnight sort of thing. And they yeah. came back with it. And um, yeah, so yeah, in the diplomatic bag, as it were. <laughs> I, I mean, it was just kind of like, you know, it was it was very stressful and everything. It was, so, it's, yeah. it's, it's an extremely stressful process. It yes. is extremely stressful. So we're putting we're putting everyone onto the idea of moving to America <laughs> with it, through the family, you know. But I mean, it, you know, it's like it worked out. I'm here, you know. You know I just want I'm to still be, alive. I just wanted to be really realistic about it because I think a lot of people have a false impression that it's very easy to just go and move a to lot of people countries. after I moved here you know a lot of friends and stuff would contact me on Facebook and they'd say like oh yeah I'm thinking of coming over to America what did you have to do and I, and I'd just be kind of like okay do you Marry want the <laughs> do you want the long or sh short answer to that and they'd be like, oh, I'm just thinking of coming to America. Yeah, I'm, th I'm, I'm sick of the UK, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, it's a... It's a yeah, you did have a lot of people I had a lot of people say, And I'd tell them everything, and they'd never respond. <laughs> no, they wouldn't. They they unfriended me, they deleted me, everything. You know? No, I'm just... They, they No, I'd, I'd tell them everything that was going on, and they'd just be like, yeah, nah. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of bother, mate. You know? <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's basically the process. Um, we didn't obviously go super in detail. No, no, no. That's just basically that. But w one thing that when you come over here is just a little aside is like to truly live over here, you have to integrate. You have to kind of like adopt the culture of the USA. You can't just kind of like be visiting the country. Yeah. You know, it's like, because a lot of people do, and there's a lot of people who fail to do that, a lot of Brits anyway. I don't, I don't know. They come I mean, over here, and you know, there's a lot of Brits who come over here, and they've they've integrated so well that they, they don't remember where they're from. They say, oh, I'm from, like, my doctor. You know, it's just like, oh, I'm from... L.A. I'm from L.A., and I'm just like, no. You're not, you're you not. have an accent. <laughs> no, you're not. And she's like, yeah, okay, I was from England, okay. You know, like, it's an embarrassing thing. Um... And, you know, it's like, but there's a lot of Brits who, like, come over and say, like, yeah, I'm English, you know, but I'm living over here, you know. But, I mean, you say you're not sure if, if Brits integrate into America. I think that they do way more than, like, in Spain, for example, where they sort of stay, they create communities amongst themselves. Well, yeah, like, uh, people from China, for instance, you know, they create, mm -hmm. like, Chinatown, right. you know. Right, And they just create their own kind of thing. They They don't integrate with... You know, the I think rest it's of the easier to... I mean, some of them do, obviously. I'm not saying that's... that's. I'm not tarring every person from China with the same brush, really, you know, but there's a lot of, like, that kind of thing where it's just kind of like, well, you know what, I miss home, so I'm just going to build it here I instead. Think it's, I think it's much easier to integrate into a country that speaks a common language. Yeah, 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 I definitely. Mean, though, I mean... Australians, South Africans, you know, British, you know, they'll they come to America, Canadians, you know... Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be... I mean, the cultures and the language, too, are very different. But, you know, we at least can somewhat understand each other. Yes, 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 yes. We sort of understand each other. Yeah. It was a bit frustrating early on when you'd say things and, you know, they wouldn't get what you were talking about and you'd have to really hammer it home. But <laughs> it's all right now. It's all right. I think we're out of time. I think we're out of time. And we've got another bonus entry. Yes. That was my uh, symbol crash there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so what is it today, Erica? Um, today's bonus entry into our British Snacks giveaway is to retweet the giveaway tweet that is pinned to our Tina Buddy Twitter profile. So if you just go in and give that a little retweet, and then we can see who you are. And it's we'll... pinned to the top, so. Yeah, it's pinned the t- to the top of our our profile our page so So. give that a retweet and we know you've listened Mm -hmm. and we'll jot you down for a bonus entry into that contest increases your chances of winning and if you have no idea what we're talking about then you should be following us on social media you should be following (laughs) us go to t buddy t-e-a-b-u-t-t-y on instagram facebook or twitter and you'll find the giveaway information and you can enter the contest that way, um, the contest ends at midnight on Halloween night. That's October 31st. Yes. <laughs> for people who don't celebrate Halloween. Yes, there you go. Um, but as always, thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.